Hey NFL fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Chat Sports, and today we have a fresh and new NFL news and rumors video sent to the final one before the official start of the preseason. Now I know the Hall of Fame game already happened, but week one of the preseason kicks off in just a couple of days, depending on when you watch this video. So today is our final NFL news and rumors video before the official start of the NFL preseason. Can't wait, super excited, obviously plenty more of these videos to come. But just to clarify, this is a big, big deal and a big, big week as we're finally here. It's taken so long, but we're here, we're back, we're ready. Again, I'm Thomas Mott. Let's jump into the biggest news and rumors in the National Football League today, starting in Washington and Dwayne Haskins. So the Washington Redskins actually released their first depth chart as they do for the first official preseason game coming up in a couple of days. And Haskins was third on the depth chart. Now, think in your mind, if you're not a Washington Redskins fan, you're going, okay, they have Haskins, they have Keenum and McCoy. So who was their starter? Colt McCoy was actually number one on the depth chart. He'll be the starter for the week one preseason game. Case Keenum is two, who they traded for, of course, this offseason. And then number three was Dwayne Haskins, the rookie out of Ohio State. Now, again, does this mean, you take this many, many different ways, that Haskins has been the worst quarterback in, in uh, training camp? Does this mean that Colt McCoy has been the best quarterback in training camp? I'm not necessarily sure, but I think Jay Gruden in this quote will help clarify the idea of putting McCoy one and Haskins three. We'll throw it up on the board here. Here it is. Colt's got the, the most experience in the system. And he still hasn't played a whole lot. He hasn't taken a lot of reps. Last year, it was all about Alex Smith. The year before, it was all about, Al, all about Kirk Cousins and getting them ready. Case Keenum has all the reps, but he doesn't have much experience in the system. He's doing a nice job, and obviously Haskins is a rookie. All three of them have shown flashes of being really good and really productive. All three have shown flashes of, hey, we've got to get better. So, again, this is very, very interesting in terms of the fact that Hmm. He just immediately writes off Haskins as a rookie, focuses in on Keenum, who has the reps but not enough time in the system, and McCoy, who has not had enough reps recently but has had more time in the system. So does this mean that they're really going to take it slow with Dwayne Haskins? I think a lot of people in the media have written it off like, oh, well, Haskins will be the starter at some point this season. Hmm. I don't think necessarily. I think you could see the depth chart playing out like this where McCoy starts the season when he starts to struggle, when and if, you know, could happen, then Keenan would come in. When and if he struggles, then Hashkin could come in. They could try to really sit him for at least a year, much like Patrick Mahomes did up in Denver, or in Denver, in, a, in, in Kansas City, excuse me, and try and get him ready for the future instead of making him play right now. Cole McCoy's stats just quickly, because again, he is going to be the starter, at least for this first preseason game. Three games played last year, 63% completion percentage, three touchdowns, and three interceptions. He's shown flashes. Remember a game in Dallas a couple years back? But at the same time, there's a reason he's been a backup his entire life in the league. All right, first question here, right off the bat, who should start week one of the regular season in Washington? I want you guys to scroll down. Let me know in the comments section down below. Okay, moving right along here. Could Melvin Gordon be moving to Houston? This is a question we've been hearing a lot recently in the media. I have people I know in Houston, and I'll tell you right off the bat, Houston is not interested in Melvin Gordon. Again, this is a, a landing spot that many people predicted could be a spot for the Charger running back to be traded to. But again, there's just no real meat to this. Everything I've heard is that they're not looking for a replacement to Lamar Miller. Now again, remember, the Texans did just go ahead and cut Deontay Foreman, the former Texas running back, who a lot of people thought would be a good backup running back there for Lamar Miller. Didn't like it, and so right now they're rolling with Lamar Miller and a bunch of backups that you see on your screen right now. What I was told, and talking to Texan people, is that they're not looking for a replacement for Lamar Miller, they're looking for a true backup for Lamar Miller. So they're in the market right now for a running back, whether that's like a guy like Jay Ajayi, who's still uh, on the board, who was in Philadelphia most recently, and previously with the Miami Dolphins, he could be an option. But right now, Houston, even though people were predicting and trying to will that to actually be adding him with a guy like uh, Deshaun Watson, looking like it's not gonna happen as Houston is really trying to get a backup to Lamar Miller because they still trust and believe in that running back up there in Houston. So the question then becomes, where the heck is Melvin Gordon going to go? Now again, if you've been living underneath a rock, and you haven't heard that Melvin Gordon wants a new contract, you know, only making like five, six million dollars a year. He wants that in double figures. Chargers said no. Melvin Gordon said, okay, trade me. And then when we're at, we're at right now. And so people are trying to be like, okay, who needs a running back? Hmm, let's try and figure it out. And so they landed on Houston. But again, 
the news and rumor today, Houston is not going to be interested in trading for Melvin Gordon. They want a backup running back, not a true starter. Now, are they right? Are they wrong? Where do you guys think Melvin Gordon will play in 2019? Will he hold out? Will he stay a charger? Will he be traded? I'm curious your guys' thoughts on where Gordon could potentially go. All right, moving on here. Let's go down to Miami and talk about the Dolphins down there in training camp and the fact that quarterback Josh Rosen, who was recently traded this offseason to the Miami Dolphins from the Arizona Cardinals, is apparently having a pretty darn good camp. Now, Fitzpatrick, Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, the Harvard journeyman quarterback, is most likely going to start week one or at least be the starter in preseason. But I think there's a case that Rosen could play his way into being the starter down there in Miami. Again, Fitzpatrick has shown flashes. Remember early parts of last year during the Jameis Winston suspension, he looked pretty darn good and had one of the better quarterback numbers the first couple games of the year. But then, of course, levels off. There's a reason he's not a perennial starter in the league. He's kind of journeyed around because he can't stay consistent. And so could Rosen be potentially assuming the starting spot sooner rather than later. Well, head coach Brian Flores had this to say, quote, I think he's been about, excuse me, about Josh Rosen, quote, I think he's made some improvements really across the board. There's things that a lot of people don't see, better footwork, mechanics in the pocket, decision making. A lot of times people, all they see is a touchdown pass. They don't see the check down that's a positive play for the team. I think he's improved in those areas. I think those are the little things that go a long way at that position. Remember, Josh Rosen was much maligned after being taken later on in the first round. Now, still early, like, you know, it's like 11 to Arizona, but obviously after a lot of the other quarterbacks, guy like Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield, uh, and then the Jets quarterback, Sam Darnold. So he was like, oh, well, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. And then got to play in Arizona last year and in 14 games, had a 55% completion percentage, 11 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, looked bad. Right, and the Cardinals, of course, worst team in the league. They go ahead and draft uh, 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 Kyler Murray, excuse me, and then trade him to Miami. And so now the question is, all right, how good are you, and can you beat out a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick? Because remember, Josh Rosen is back against the wall in terms of a time frame, right? Because if they struggle this year, and they're a top five pick, or really a top three pick, the tank for Tua, Jake Fromm is going to be there. There are quarterbacks that you might want to take in the 2020 draft over Josh Rosen. So Rosen's got to get in the starting role now or potentially be traded to another team and further, you know, setting his career back even further. So again, Josh Rosen is looking good. He's turning heads. Everything that you hear is that he has been a great quarterback in training camp so far. But the questions still remain when and if he can beat out a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick. Question for you guys. How many games will Josh Rosen play this year in Miami? And I'm going to get a lot, a lot of love here on Chat Sports. We try to get out to you guys as often as we can. How many games I think Rosen will play? Give me a type down below. Rosen will play in X amount of games. I think a real chance that he could play in 10 plus like if ryan fitzpatrick is one and four right or two and five what's the point of keep go, uh, of, of continuing to go right you're not out of playoffs yet but you're basically out of playoffs so why not just bring rosen in see what you got that way you know for a fact you're either going to go with rosen or not go with rosen in the 2020 season because of the 2020 draft all right let's move along here let's go up east to philadelphia and a team that I've said before I think is a stacked football team overall. I mean, one of the best in the National Football League. They have a rookie running back in Miles Sanders. Talk about Josh Rosen turning heads. Miles Sanders is blowing people away in Philadelphia at their training camp. Now, remember, the Eagles traded for Jordan Howard this offseason, the running back, the younger running back, from Chicago, and then spent a second-round draft pick on the Penn State running back, Miles Sanders. Sanders, again, I'm telling you, everything I've heard is that he has been easily the best running back at Eagles camp so far this year. And again, this is a camp with Darren Sproles, a camp with a lot of young guys like Corey Clement and, and uh, Josh Adams. And they traded, of course, like I said, for, for, for Jordan Howard. So he's still standing out above the rest. Eagle defensive end Brandon Graham, who had the strip sack of Tom Brady in the Super Bowl a couple years back, said this, quote, the boy's a beast, man. You're going to see. Ooh, I like him. I just don't want to give out too much. I'm going to let him be a surprise to some. Now, Miles Sanders coming out was still a highly toted running back, was arguably a top two or three running back in this year's class, but was forgotten because he replaced Saquon Barkley at Penn State. So the numbers last year, 220 carries, 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns, 5.8 yards, 
per rush, still fantastic, but he was replacing a guy like Saquon Barkley, so the media kind of glanced over him overall. Philadelphia loved him during the entire pre-draft process. I think I reported that here at Chad Sports, and then ending up spending a high draft pick on him. And it's looking like he's going to, one, shine, look for that in the preseason, and two, get a lot of touches early on in the Philadelphia Eagles 2019 campaign. I think the Eagles are one of the three best teams in the NFC. What do you guys think? Who is the best team right now in the NFC? Rams, Saints, Eagles, someone else, Cowboys, I guess, if your name's is Tom, Tom Downey, would probably put that right there. Um, no, Mitch, the Raiders are not in the NFC. You can't put them down there. You still comment, but that just wouldn't work out. So again, type down below, best team in the NFC. I wanna hear from you guys. All right, two more here. Revolving around quarterbacks. Let's go quickly out to Colts camp. And another update here on Andrew Luck, because again, Luck has been out with that calf strain. Hasn't practiced in a, what seems like a long, long time. Been about a three month process with this calf issue. And the most recent report, as Andrew Luck told NBC's Peter King, he still expects to be ready by week one. Again, here's the quote on your screen. I certainly believe I will quote, be ready. I mean, be ready in the little brackets. That's certainly the goal. But at the same time, Peter King was still able to get out of Andrew Luck that injuries are starting to become a concern for the 30-year-old quarterback. Here's the other quote. Luck said, quote, at times, I don't worry about it. It can be frustrating, the arc of an injury, whether it's a big surgical one or something you're rehabbing through, but no, because I've, I've improved. Maybe I'm not improving as fast as I want and missing things is no fun. It eats at you. But I do know at the end of the day, if I'm getting the most out of myself, if I'm being the best I can that day, that's what I need to do. Again, Andrew Luck is not going to play and probably the entire preseason would be my guess. At least the first couple of weeks, you're not going to see him out there because he has not been practicing and this calf strain continues to linger. Remember last week I said the doctors had no concern about the Durant typeness of this injury where the calf strain turns into an Achilles tear. But at the same time, Luck still being held out. And it's a kind of a question mark going forward for when he will play. But he thinks week one, so Colts fans rest assured, he should be able to go week one. But we'll see. I mean, it's been lingering. And those calf issues, ask Kevin Durant whether it's that or not. Right? They said it wasn't, but mm, we'll wait and see is a little bit concerning if I was out there in Indianapolis. Because again, you've seen the numbers, 4,500 yards last season, basically 4,600 yards last season, 67% completion percentage, 39 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. I've said many times Luck is poised to have a MVP breakout. I mean, last year was big. An even bigger year this year. The Colts are a good team in the AFC and are probably a top three team in the AFC. And Luck needs to be healthy to be able to do that. All right, final bit of news here on the NFL News and Rumors video on Chat Sports. Tom Brady signed a two year deal yesterday to, you know, essentially lock him down for the foreseeable future up in New England, basically on his 42nd birthday as well. But I want to clarify here it is a two year extension. And so essentially his, 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 his salary this year is gonna go from $15 million to $23 million, but the Patriots still hold all the power in two years from now. So two years from now, it's gonna be like $30 million, and then 2021 is $32 million. It's ridiculous, but the Patriots still hold the power to either go, mm, uh, the 42-year-old didn't look too good this year, we're just gonna go ahead and cut the, cut the uh, cord at the end of this season, they can do that, or what they would have to do if they want to keep him is go ahead and restructure the deal in 2020 to make it go further because the cap hit is just so big. Again, it's a two-year deal. Adam Schefter from ESPN reported it as a two-year deal, but it's basically year to year. It's essentially a pay bump from 15 to 23 for this year with the option for the Patriots to head on home, get out if he does have a serious aging issue this year and they can go, all right, you know what? We're going to move on. We'll draft someone or we'll go ahead and throw in the rookie out of all, burn Jared Stidham. Either way, the Patriots made a smart move here by keeping Brady happy for one more year and then getting flexibility essentially for the next couple of years, depending on what Brady looks like at 43, at 44, and of course his target retirement age of 45 years old. Just for fun, I already asked the question, who is the best team in the NFC right now? Who's the best team in the AFC? Right? And I ain't Mitch, I see him. He's already typing. Like, he's already going down. Raiders, baby. Okay, besides Mitch, right? Like, who is the best team in the AFC? Is it the Patriots? Is it the Colts? Is it Patrick Mahomes in uh, Kansas City? I want to hear from you guys, as always. I always read the comments on here, guys. Every single time. Scroll down. Type them up. I'll read them. That way I can gauge the fan base. That's the point of this, right? Makes a lot of sense. All right, that's it for the NFL news and rumors video today. Of course, subscribe to Chat Sports because one, I do a ton more videos here, and two, we as a whole do a 
ton of videos on chat sports so plenty more nfl content in the upcoming days and weeks so be sure to subscribe for chat sports i'm thomas mott signing off enjoy the rest of your day